Okay, this video is going to take us through the analysis of a 3D structure, also called a space structure. Uh, what we're looking at here is the horizontal boom of a construction crane. A um, little bit about its geometry real quick. We can see that it is 10 feet across here, 3.75 feet here, meaning it is 7.5 feet here. Um, we have our only applied force here, 20 kips all the way on one side. Um, so, of course, these are rectangles across here. These are equilateral triangles here. Um, and that's about all we need to see from that. So, as it says, we're going to go ahead and do this analysis using the method of sections. So, if we go ahead and take a cut, it could look like this. Um, this isn't the only cut we could make, of course. We could make a cut here or here. Um, but the cut that um, is shown is a perfectly good cut. And so, we're going to go ahead and use that one. So a good way to start our analysis is with a moment balance. So let's go ahead and take the sum of the moments about point D. Um, point D is right here. And so that's going to give us four terms, right? Because we can see we have one, two, three, four forces that do not sit at D. So what that is first going to give us is our Dn crossed with force. Here I'm going to use a P just because we already have an F, so let's call that P and M. That's our first term. Our second term is going to be R D N again. This time crossed into P and H. That's our second term. That is our third term written out there. That's our fourth term written out there, crossed with the applied force 20 kips. And, of course, they better all equal to zero. So now we're going to write out our force vectors. And what force vectors are are essentially the magnitude of the four forces we're looking at multiplied by the unit vector, which is essentially the magnitudeless direction that that force is acting in. So we'll start with the force Nm. So what that, that's going to look like is... P and M can be written as the magnitude of P and M multiplied by the unit vector of N M. And because I can't bold stuff here, I will give it a little vector notation. So that is our, that's our second one here for the NH vector. So there again, we have our full vector is multiplied magnitude by unit vector. So that is the third term there as well. Now for the force vector, that's a little bit easier because it's very easy to see that it's only acting in one direction. And what that allows us to say is that our force vector is really just the negative k hat direction. Um, so we can write that as negative magnitude force k hat. So as you can see, we've already got a lot of vector notation going on. There's going to be some more coming at you. There's also going to be some cross products, 3D determinants, things like that. So if you haven't taken Calc 3 or you need to brush up on it, now would be a good time to do that before we dive right in. So now we've identified unit vectors that we want to use, but we don't actually know them yet. So let's go ahead and draw those out. So the unit vector Mm is defined as... The, the vector Rnm over the magnitude of that vector. And so here this one will be pretty easy. That will just be negative 10 in the j hat direction over while the magnitude negative 10 is 10. And that means our unit vector is in the negative j hat direction. So the way to see that is and n sits right here. And we can see that that runs only in the y direction, no x or z components. And it runs against positive y, which is negative y, which is negative j hat. Now we're going to find our next unit vector, which is going to be u and h. And this is going to be significantly more difficult because it does not point directly in any one axis, and it points in all three axes. So the way we're going to identify UNH is we're going to come up here. And what we're going to see is that we need to go from N to H. So how are we going to do that? We're going to move 
10 feet backwards here in the y direction, we need to move, this is actually in the middle of this triangle here that you can see, so we need to move 3.7 feet this way, and then we need to come up some k amount, um, and we're actually going to have to do a little work to determine that k. So to determine that, um, let's go ahead and look at this triangle here that sits a little closer to us, which is made up of this face, this face, and then this dh. So we know that this is 10 feet here, right? And we know that this is 7.5 feet. So 10 feet here, 7.5 feet here. So by Pythagorean theorem, we can say this face or this direction here, dh, also nh, is 12.5 feet. So now what we can say is if the total distance we want to go is 12.5 feet, then the distance we're looking for in the j direction can be written as the square root of 12.5 squared minus 10 squared minus that 3.75 squared. And what that's going to come out to is 6.495. So our j direction is going to be 6.495 feet. So this unit vector nh can be written as the nh vector over its magnitude. And what that will look like is 3.75 feet in the i hat direction. Whoops, that's not... That's not positive, that's actually negative, and then minus, minus 10 feet in the j-hat direction, and now we have determined, whoops, I'm sorry, that's actually not k-hat at all, sorry if that confused anybody, that is of course k, is our k-direction, because we already knew our i and j-directions. So our k-direction then is 6.49. And all of that is over, of course, the square root of 3.75 squared minus 10 squared, which will really just be plus 100 anyway, plus 6.495 squared. So there I have put the values. I've put the values for what that actually comes out to. You're welcome to calculate them yourself, or just take my word for it. So now we can do the last unit vector, that is unit vector ih that we need, and of course that's also going to be the vector over its magnitude. And that one is going to be quite a bit simpler because it is also just in the j-hat direction, so again we have negative 10 j-hat over which is negative j hat. So now we have these unit vectors and what they essentially tell us so now we have these unit vectors and what they essentially tell us is to what degree do each of these vectors point in a certain direction. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these unit vectors, put them back up into here, so we're going to take this unit vector we're going to multiply it through with our actual vector magnitudes, and we'll get our full vector with both direction and magnitude. So for the nm vector, what that's going to look like is our vector nm is our magnitude nm in the j direction, in the j hat direction. For nh, Vector nh is magnitude nh now multiplied by that whole piece that we just found, which is 0.3 in the i hat direction, negative 0.8 in the j hat direction, and then 5 
0.5196 in the k hat direction. Great. Our pH pIH vector, which I put there, is going to be the same as. So now we have all of these vectors, two of them in the j hat direction, one of them in all three, and of course our force vector going straight down in the k hat direction. So the next thing we need to do before we can take our cross products is we need to find some r's, which we are going to then do in the r cross f. So those are going to look like this. And so these are the three r's that we need. All of them were just taken from the geometry of the problem above. These are all values we've seen before. This 6.495 we saw for briefly before the others. We've all seen the distance across. The bottom is 7.5, half of that 3.75, um, all things that we've seen before. And then the 20 is the only one that might be a little confusing where that comes from, is that from our location here where we've been working, we are 10, 20 feet over to the force. So we are now ready to take some cross products. And so those are shown here. Save us some time and ease of reading. Um, these are done digitally. Uh, but you can see we have one, two, three, four cross products. Um, feel free to review them if you want. But what they will result as when you do all four 3D determinants out, they are going to look like this. So the reason that these actually look pretty straightforward, despite the fact that we just did four cross products, is because we have so many zeros up there on our 3D determinants, so a lot of stuff just went away. So now we have our i, j, and k's, which we can set equal to zero and solve. We want to go ahead and remember that f is given to b 20 kips. And then we can go ahead and solve. And again, what these will look like, you're welcome to check them if you like, but if you like to take my word for it, these will solve to be PIH is equal to about 62 kips, PNH equal to about 19, and PNM is negative 46.2 kips. So great, we've solved for three of our forces. We're actually almost there. The next thing we're going to do to finish solving this is take the sum of the forces. And that's not sum of forces in X or Y or Z or anything like that. These are going to be in vectors, so it's literally just all of the forces in every direction. So again, to, for ease of readability, that is done digitally here. So those are all of the forces that we saw all the way back up at the top with our method of sections. So now we can go ahead and take each one of those and put values to them. So written out, all seven of our forces look just like this. You'll notice I put the bottom four that we already solved for in green. You may notice that PNH is not the number um, it's not the number that we saw before. So what this actually is, is that magnitude that we found, which was 19.25 kips, and uh, that was multiplied through by basically this, which is the same for PDH. And if you multiply that through, these are the values that you get. So now we have the last three forces that we have to solve for. So what are we going to do for that? Well, we're going to take our unknowns, which are these guys, and our knowns, which are now these guys, we're going to plug them all into our sum of forces equation. And what that's going to look like is this. So these are the i, j, and k pieces of our sum of forces broken out. So first we're going to solve here in k. That's easy. We're going to solve for dh. We're going to take that, put it up here. That's going to allow for us to solve for dm. Then we're going to have dh, dm, and we're going to be able to solve for DC. There you go, three unknowns solved for. And there we go, we are done. So let's go ahead and take notice that by convention, whenever we see a negative sign here, that means we are seeing a compressive force and a positive being a tensile force. And the last thing I want to notice is that DM is equal to zero. So all the way back up here at the beginning, we see that DM here well, that goes across the bottom. That's the one that goes across the bottom. So because that was zero, we have symmetric load on both sides, which explains why we see a lot of the same values twice when we solve for unknown. And just like that, we have solved a 3D space structure. Congratulations.